Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today it's done. This is, well, yeah. <laughs> Let's dive in and finish this thing. So, we are finally finishing this thing up and I'm really getting exciting here. Next thing we need to do is actually attach all of the uh, turnbuckles into the bottom of the bottom slab. So I've got all the holes where the cables come through and we need to have the turnbuckles so that the cable comes out, turns horizontally and then goes in. So I'm laying out where all the turnbuckles are and then to hog out all the material for where these need to be, we're going to use an auger bit and I have that taped off so that I know how deep to run these. That way I don't put the tip of the auger bit through the top side of the slab. Not a happy day. Um, thankfully, I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, so we're going to just auger out as much as we possibly can and then uh, come in and chisel out the rest. Uh, for most of it, I'm using a one inch auger, but then this section up here where the eye of the turnbuckle comes into, I was using a what three eighths ish auger bit, something like that. And then once all of these are in, we can blow out the chips and make them fly everywhere. Happiness. <laughs> but this makes it really easy to come in with a larger chisel and remove the waste. I'm not making these incredibly clean and smooth. I'm just cleaning them out and getting them to the point where the turnbuckle can fit down in there. I'm not going to be flattening out the bottom with a, a router. I'm just going to be hogging out the material. Next we need a uh, another slot for the crossbar to go into. This will be the bar that the turnbuckle actually pulls against. So again we're going to come in with the, uh, with the auger bit, take out the majority of the waste and that makes it much easier to chisel out. And I want to check it occasionally, make sure that the bar will fit in there. Uh, for this, I'm, for the bar, I'm going to be using a quarter inch stainless steel rod. Um, everything in here is stainless steel and that way uh, there's nothing rusting, nothing getting uh, into a problem with that. So now that we have this rod and can fit down in there, we can make sure everything else works, fit the turnbuckle in, make sure there's enough space for it. We're gonna pull the cable through the hole and make sure that there's enough space to then connect into it. Now on that hole, we need to actually create a pathway from the hole itself into this recess we made. And this needs to actually be large enough for the, uh, the Nyko press on it so that it will, uh, well, it can slide in there without jamming up. It also needs to be down low enough so that it doesn't push the turnbuckle out of the slot. So this whole thing goes down uh, somewhere around 3 eighths of an inch or a little more deep. Actually, I think it was about a half inch deep. And then in the actual hole where the cable comes through, we don't want it to be a tight 90 degree turn. Uh, we want that to be rounded. So I'm going to come in here with a small gouge that will fit my eighth inch cable and actually round over that surface. It, it sounds like it's, it's difficult, but it's actually really quick and easy. And with one done, now we just need to go and do the other six. And uh, two of these we're actually going to be putting together uh, because two of the cables come up through the same hole. And if I would do it again, I wouldn't have two cables come up through the same hole. Uh, but I'll be talking about that in the, in the plans and then the other video coming out on Thursday. So this one is just double wide of what the rest of them are. To actually lay out that crossbar, I wait until after I get the rest of the slots cut out. And then I can lay on the crossbar and get it exactly where it needs to be. You can see how this one has the two turnbuckles coming under one bar. Uh, why waste space when you don't have to? But now that we have all of these turnbuckles in place, now we can actually, well, it's basically done. Uh, everything is ready to go into it. We need just to actually do all of the finish work. Speaking of finish work, let's work on the arches. I want to chamfer all the corners on these arches, but I don't want them to chamfer all the way. I want them to stop just before they get to the, uh, the slab that these house into. So I have marks on these arches where they intersect with the slab, and I'm going to come a half inch away from that. So there'll be a half inch of sharp corner, and then into the chamfer that comes up the edges of the, the round. So I'm going to chisel in at the stop point and create my stop chamfer, and then I'm going to use the spoke shave to put the chamfer on the rest of the board. Then I can feather it in with a chisel and get that nice and clean, come with a card scraper and clean it out. The, uh, the spoke shape actually does really work, good work on chamfers. Um, even on the end grain, it's, it's great for just being flexible when you don't have the, uh, the, the block plane to follow the round. Now we can sharpen up the card scraper and start doing all the finishing. We're going to scrape down all of the surfaces and this will be the final um, finish. I, I take it right off of scrape onto uh, to use. So we're going to scrape all the surfaces and get them down to nice and clean here. You can see the, the big curls, you know it's good and sharp. 
Now here a little closer you'll see, oh, that was sawdust with a little bit of curls. That means I probably need to sharpen it a little bit. Sharpen it, come back, and ah, that one's better for actually getting curls. This also works very well on the epoxy and getting it to its final shape. Um, it doesn't actually smooth out the epoxy. For that, we need to polish and sand it. Um, but for most of it, we can get it down to the shape we want. And then I'm going to come in with 400 grit, 800 grit, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, um, and then into polishing. But before we do that, we need to actually start attaching the arches to the slabs. I'm attaching the arches to the slabs before I do any finishing because I can't finish um, until everything is in place because I have to do some more um, work around things. And so it's one of these things where I can't actually put finish on until the very end. So let's actually glue in the arches. And I'm, on one of these, I tried taping it off to uh, keep epoxy from getting onto the wood. But in the end, it just wasn't worth it. Um, uh, I wouldn't tape it in the future. I'm going to be putting on copious amounts of epoxy on all surfaces and then we can fit it down in. Uh, the first time I'm going to slide it down in without epoxy in the arch, pull it up, see if it has contact on all surfaces, and then add epoxy where needed. Then we can check and make sure that it is square in both directions, and we let it sit. One of the nice things about epoxy is you don't need serious clamping pressure, and with how these are pinched in place, they sit just fine. Now we can start attaching the hardware, and these go in pretty well into the top. We have the eye that we already put in there with a stainless steel rod, and I drilled the hole all the way through at a little over a quarter inch, but the last little bit uh, was drilled at a little under uh, a quarter inch, so when these pins go in, they actually have to be pounded in. I'm going to pound them in as far as I can flush, and then I'm going to use a punch to push them in the rest of the way. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to epoxy in the ends of it. Uh, here was another mistake. I, I tried using five minute epoxy so that it wouldn't pour in past the pins as there's a little bit of hole in there, but the color just didn't match on it. This was, it ended up being a little more milky. Um, and I wish I would have uh, done something a little bit differently. Maybe put in some CA glue to stop it from going in and then use the same epoxy I used before rather than a five minute epoxy. Um, but in the end, it's just a little bit of a, uh, um, coloring in there but it's not uh, not too bad we can do some detail scraping to get these down to flush and then scrape them off and there we go we are ready for the final detail of all of the epoxy speaking of which there's always going to be a little bit of squeeze out around the bottom this is great to get the card scraper in there even on the back side where you have that angle to fit into this it will scrape it out really nicely and get the corner in there and get a nice clean surface all the way into the the very edge uh, then we can put in the uh, little hardware eye pieces that the cable will go through. This is into the bottom slab using an aluminum uh, dog actually worked out pretty well to pound them in so I'm not damaging them. We have three spacers that are set for the correct distance apart. Actually, they're ever so slightly less than the correct distance apart. So when we put the cable through, then I can pull up the center cable which will take the weight off of those outside uh, stanchions. So we're going to pull all the cables up through and start doing all of our hardware connection. Yay! Um, and this is where everything really comes together. At this point, it's, it's, it's starting to turn into a coffee table. We're going to put the sleeve through and then put it on the eye, which is already around the turnbuckle, slide it back into the sleeve, and then crimp this down on. And I want to crimp them down as close as I possibly can, so it takes a bit of fiddling to get the eye in place to pull all the slack out of the cable and get them down close and then we can actually press them down on. And I want to get that eye as close to the entrance as possible because the closer I can get to that, the more slack, the more space I have to pull the turnbuckle. And the more space I have to pull the turnbuckle, the better the chance that I'm actually going to get it tight enough. This one with the, the two turnbuckles was a little more difficult, but ended up working out fine. I was using some pliers to pull it through. You can see I'm trying to get it as close as I can to the entrance. And then turnbuckle it and cut off the excess on the cable drive down the pegs in and now we just got to tighten this together and these uh, ones with the screwdriver these work really really well uh, i didn't have to do too much to to make them work you can just slide the screwdriver in there and, and pinch them uh, i had two of these extra that had the hex shaft which normally i really like these ones uh, but in this case i had to remove some more material as you can see here so i can get the wrench on it um, then I can put a screwdriver through one of the eyes that wants to rotate, and this makes it fairly easy to put the wrench on there and tell, ooh, nice and tight. Strum, 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 bing, bong, bong. 
um, all of the the strings were, were pretty good. You can see it's a little wobbly here. I'm going to be tightening things up now that it's all in place and freestanding. I took out the supports and we are going to tighten all of the cables until they are slightly tight and the top is level with the bottom. And so I'm going to go around all of these and pull them until they're nice and tight. And when they're all even and they're all flush with the bottom, then I tighten the middle one. And you can see this top is really solid. If I turn it, it, it turns and the, the bottom uh, moves. And so it's actually really, really solid. All the wobbling you're seeing here is it rocking on the uh, on the saw bench, uh, the saw uh, bench that I'm working on. So we're going through all the grits uh, up to 3000 grit sandpaper. And then after 3000 grit sandpaper, we pull out the Yorkshire grit. And this is the polishing compound that I use. Um, the nice thing about it is that as the as you polish more and more, the grit actually starts to break down and it gets into a finer and finer grit um, and really polishes it into a glass smooth surface. So all of the little bits of epoxy, we sand them down and then we polish them in. Um, I'm really happy I left that little bit of metallic fleck in the epoxy. Um, number one, it hides any scratches, so if there are any slight imperfections, they'd slightly disappear with all that fleck in there. Number two, it just adds a little bit of mysteriousness to it, and I really like that. Now for the actual finish, we are using my all-time favorite furniture finish. Uh, this stuff is, is phenomenal. The only downside to it is it is crazy expensive. Uh, but this is a hard wax, um, a Rubio Monocoat. It is stuff that I, I love. Um, the nice thing about it is you just you mix it up. I, I get it with the hardener as well. You can do it without the hardener. Uh, it just takes longer to cure. You pour it onto the surface and you smear it around. You want to leave a nice thick film on all surfaces. I'm just going to use a squeegee to move it around and then come back with a rag to apply a little bit heavier in places that need it. And then you let it sit for about 15 minutes. And so you put it on just as thick as you see here. I mean, just a, a thick gel coat, basically. Let it sit for about 15 minutes, and the wood will soak up as much as it possibly can. And then you come back and you wipe it off. And I'll use one rag to wipe off the majority of the junk, and then I'll come back in and wipe off all the rest of it, and then I'll bring another rag in and polish it down. And that's it. You let it sit for a few hours for it to cure, and the finish is done. It's this gorgeous matte finish that just really comes out. The nice thing about it is if you have any problems with it in the future, um, anything that needs to be worked on, you can sand out a spot on the table, and then you bring in the, uh, the Rubio Monocoat, pour it on, and it will feather into its existence. It doesn't make multiple layers, don't make it darker. Multiple layers don't do anything at all. Um, it just, it will soak on. So you can put layer after layer after layer on this, and it will look just like one layer. That's one of the great things about Monocoat. It's just Monocoat, one coat. Um, and it's really that simple. You smear it on, get it as thick as you can, let it sit for about 15 minutes or so and then wipe it off, polish it down, and it is golden. And it's, it's fast, it's easy, it smells amazing. Um, no VOCs, it is just an incredible, incredible finish. Just incredibly expensive. But with that being said, oh, I'm in love with this stuff. It just brings out all this color in oak. It is one of the closest uh, protective finishes to a, a boiled linseed oil finish. It just has so much color and texture. Um, I, I love it. And this piece just... It really, really came out well. It was far better than I was expecting. And uh, the, the little bits of figure in here in the oak and the, the live edge and then the epoxy fill cleaning things up, I am, I'm overjoyed with how this came out. It is really exactly what I was looking for. And uh, someone out there is going to be really happy. So someone out there is going to win this. Looking forward to it. Good luck on the bidding. He, this was so cool. So there you have it. I am just, uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I am absolutely in love with how this came out. It is, it's everything I was really wanting it to be and a little bit more. There are a few quirks and odd things in it that, um, that I've learned from because this is very much a learning experience for me. This is wildly outside of my normal things. And so there are lots of things that I learned. I'm going to be doing a video on this channel on Thursday, actually going over this whole project and pointing out the things that I learned, things that I didn't do very well, uh, things that I could work on better. 
Uh, but that being said, this is a functional piece and it is actually very stable. I mean, you can see if you slide it, the whole thing moves. I'd have no problem with putting a cup of coffee on top of this. Um, yes, there is a little bit of movement with the, um, this V on the back didn't work quite as well as I want. It probably would have worked better to do another X on this side. Um, but again, it's a learning experience. Now, if you like this and you would actually like to own this, I am going to be auctioning this off. The proceeds from the auction are going to be going to the Winnebago Casa, C-A-S-A. Uh, they are an organization that is dedicated to fighting for kids who are currently in the whole legal system and making sure they get placed into a good home. It is a really cool organization that makes a massive difference and it's one that my wife is personally interested in so uh, we're gonna be donating the proceeds from this to that. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about that or you want to put a bid in on this there's a link to the auction going down below. It will be going until the 12th of September so if you want it jump on it now. I have to say it'll be very hard to let this one go because this is this is just really, really happy. Um, I, I think I might do something different like this for me in the future, although the style isn't quite my wife, it is very much me. The plans for this will be coming. They're not quite out yet. I still have a little more tweaking to do on them, but they will be out before next week's video. Uh, so if you want to try something like this and would like to learn from all my mistakes, um, I will have those available as well. And I'll be adding and subtracting exactly what I would do in the future and from the lessons I've learned how I would build this same thing. If you do have any questions, concerns, ideas, things you'd like to see, let me know those down in the comments below, and I might bring some of those up on Thursday's video. This has been an absolute joy to make, and I hope you like it as much as I did. On that note, I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel. You guys are the ones who are making this channel happen, and what is allowing me to make crazy, weird things like that. Thank you for that. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about that, there are links to that down below, as well as hop on the auction and see if you can win this thing. On that note, that's it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. I may not have cable TV, but I've got cable coffee table.